Very cold morning here at Craigieburn and welcome to CFA's graduation ceremony for the CFA recruit firefighters from course one of 2015. My name is Mark Sullivan, I'm the CFA's Executive Director for Communities and Communications and it's my pleasure to be here as the Master of Ceremonies today. I'd like to officially welcome you all here and especially I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guest who I'll run through now. Joining us this morning as part of the official party is the Honourable Jane Garrett MP, Minister for Emergency Services. Claire Higgins, who's our CFA Chair. Michael Wooten, the CEO of CFA. Ewan Ferguson, AFSM, the Chief Officer for CFA. We're also delighted to have with us Ros Spence, MLA, member for Euro. Kate Harrop, the Acting Executive Director, Operational Training and Volunteerism for CFA. Margaret Thomas, Acting Executive Director for People and Culture for CFA. Chris Bigham, the Acting Operations Manager for CFA. Hans von Hammond, AFSM President of the Volunteer Fire Brigades Victoria. Kirsty Schroeder, Director of the Operational Learning and Development here at MFB, uh, the facility I should say. And Brendan Angwin, Commander MFB. A couple more. Tony Walker, CEO, Ambulance Victoria. Councillor Adam Atmaka, Mayor Hume, City Council. Corey Woodyat, Branch Committee of Management Delegate, the UFU, United Firefighters Union. Michael Enticott, General Manager, Firefighters Credit Union. David White, Field Officer and the Finance Broker for the Firefighters Credit Union. And to all of you, CFA recruit firefighters that will be here shortly, and family and friends, welcome, welcome today. Prior to the commencement of the, uh, the formalities and the informalities a little bit later, a couple of things to mention. The emergency exits are located at the entrance gates, of course. If uh, anything was to occur, we would ask you to move in that direction. The bathrooms, uh, I think a number of you might have already found out where they are this morning, but uh, for those that don't, the bathrooms are no located near the entrance of the drill yard behind this area here. Please, your mobile phones and pay, if you have pages or mobile phones primarily, please turn them to silent or turn them off. I'm more than happy for photos to be taken, but sometimes a bit distracting when they ring. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll also be presenting humanitarian overseas service medals to two very worthy CFA recipients. And at the conclusion of these formalities, guests will be invited to relocate to the practical drill area for a demonstration by the graduates where light refreshments will be served in the Appliance Bay area. I would now like to welcome the recruits as they present themselves onto the parade ground. Now, I'd like to invite Ms. Taylor Dwyer to the dais to perform the Australian National Anthem. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free with golden soil and wealth for toil. Our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, and let us sing. Advance Australia Fair.
Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Claire Higgins, the CFA Chair, to give the welcoming address. Thanks, Mike. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we now stand and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. Minister for Emergency Services, the Honourable Jane Garrett, MP, the member for Uroke, Ros Spence, MLA, Councillor Adam Atmaka, Mayor of the Hume City Council, Mr Hans Van Hammen, President of Volunteer Fire Brigades Victoria, Corey Woodyett, the representative of the United Firefighters Union, representatives of emergency services organisations, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for attending today's graduation ceremony. It is a pleasure for me to be here to witness the graduation of our 30 newest recruits. I want to start by firstly acknowledging the efforts of the training team whose leadership, commitment and expertise over the last 19 weeks has helped the graduates before us achieve their goal of becoming CFA firefighters and a key part of the team that is keeping Victorians safe from fire and other emergencies. To the graduating class, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the CFA team. CFA's history is steeped in our community. We grew from the community spirit of coming together and helping each other to stay safe from fire. Today, however, CFA's community spirit goes deeper than fire. Throughout Victoria, CFA's brigades have become deep links into the community, not only for safety and education, but also for community connectedness and wellbeing. Your role as career firefighters is twofold, not only to be directly active in keeping Victorians safe, but also to provide support to over 1,000 volunteer brigades and over 50,000 volunteers across Victoria. You have joined an organisation that has the greatest reach in our community of any in Victoria. And I encourage you to immerse yourself in this opportunity. Today, you and your family are being welcomed into the CFA family. And this is a literal description. Wherever you go, you will be welcomed and respected. People will want to get to know you. I've seen across the state how highly respected CFA firefighters are. Once you arrive at your designated station, you will be considered to be in a position of leadership. Leadership in the sense that you will be considered an expert within your community and leadership in the sense that you will be working with volunteer brigades to help them support their community. You have an opportunity to build a great career within an organisation that is growing. Last year, the Victorian Government announced the further recruitment of 350 CFA firefighters for Victoria over the next four years, and this will open up even more opportunities for you and more opportunities for good people to join CFA. Finally, I want to thank you for choosing to become part of CFA. We need good people and you have an exciting time ahead of you. Thank you also for wanting to be part of the network of emergency services that are committed to keeping Victorians safe. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the Minister for Emergency Services, the Honourable Jane Garrett MP. Thank you, Claire, and to all of the distinguished guests, the reps from the UFU, uh, I'm delighted to be here today. But most importantly, uh, to these 30 fine recruits who have uh, today celebrate the culmination of significant uh, work that they have undertaken, not, uh, not just during these 19-week course, but to actually uh, be admitted 
to start with. It's highly, highly competitive to uh, become a CFA firefighter, uh, to have gone through those processes, to have been accepted into the recruit training course and then to have done such an outstanding job. And by all accounts from the Chief and others, uh, this has been a very fine batch of people uh, and I commend you on your work and I commend you uh, on your success today. Uh, to become a firefighter is more than just choosing a job, it is an absolute vocation. You are dedicating your life, your work, uh, not just the hours on which you are on shift, but in your role in the community, you are dedicating your lives for the protection of others, for the protection of the Victorian community, and we need it more than ever. Uh, we are a growing state, the fastest growing state in Australia. We are facing big challenges around uh, fire season, around other emergencies. I've just come back from two weeks in the United States meeting with other fire departments across that country and I can assure you that the view of Victoria in terms of emergency management and in terms of the fine men and women of our fire services has international reach. Uh, the work that you have done helping other countries, but most importantly, the work you do every day, day in, day out, protecting this state, protecting lives, protecting properties and protecting homes is world renowned. And I thank you for that on behalf of the Victorian government and the Victorian community. I also want to pay tribute today to your loved ones and your families who've helped guide you uh, to the position that you are in today. Uh, they have given you a set of values and strengths that mean you are standing before us ready to take on uh, the greatest challenge of your career. In fire stations across this state, uh, you will be day in, day out uh, protecting the community, uh, being looked to for leadership, as the Chair said, uh, standing on fine tradition of the CFA firefighters and leaders that have come before you and those that will stand with you in your career ahead. I am really proud that the Victorian Government, uh, this Victorian Government, the Andrews Government has committed to an extra 350 CFA firefighters and an extra 100 MFB firefighters. This is absolute recognition of the critical role you play in our community and the critical role that you will continue to play as we face those increasing challenges. I know that you recruits will be taking up postings at 10 stations across Victoria from Mornington to Rosebud to Bendigo to Warrnambool and so the list goes on. You do take up those positions with our eternal gratitude, with our thanks and with our admiration, uh, and we wish you the very, very best in the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, and, and thank you, Chair. I'd now like to invite the squad commander to prepare for the inspection of the recruit. Thank you very much. Now we're going to ask the Chief to stay on the parade ground for the presentation to the recruits of their epaulets and certificates. And I'll also invite those nominated family members to come forward um, to those points to the left and right of where you're sitting, the nominated family members, so that they can place the epaulets on their particular recruit. Thank you, everybody. Okay. CFA recruit firefighter number one, Sam Hutchison from Mornington, going to Patterson River. Recruit, Kuba Zulewski from Armstrong Creek, going to Point Cook.
Jack Conan from Emerald going to Springvale. Chris Watson from Portland going to Carrillo. Dave Stewart from Kilmore going to Hopper's Crossing. David Van Helden from Lower Templestowe going to Springvale. Andrew Connolly from Chelsea Heights going to Hopper's Crossing. Matt O'Toole from Bendigo, going to Sunbury. Josh Drake from Mount Eliza, going to Patterson River. Tim Abraham from Warrnambool, going to Point Cook. Stephen Harris from Bendigo, staying at Bendigo. Jonathan Bell, Achuka, going to Bendigo. Matt Harry from Mernda going to Roeville. Simon Makari from Karam going to Rosebud. <laughs> Matt.
Michael Rudd Whittlesey going to Point Cook. Len Allen from Rosebud going to Cranbourne. <laughs> Sam Bullock from Port Melbourne going to Warrnambool. Sam Bowen from Airport West going to Greenvale. Richard Brash from Mount Eliza going to Roeville. <laughs> Reed Coots from Frankston going to Rosebud. <laughs> Lee McLean from Keysborough, going to Mornington. Max Melzer from Q going to Carayo. Sam Dash from Croydon going to Greenvale. <laughs> Brendan Crozier from Newham to Sunbury. <laughs> Callan Hare from Croydon Hills to Pakenham.
Michael Arcus South Morang to Craigieburn. Nick Bigham from Brown Hill to Carrio. Chad Abersteiner from Wanturna South to Mornington. Ben Barbetti from Ballarat to Warrnambool. Finally, Emmett Bronca from Seddon, station location, Carayo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a point in the ceremony where we're going to recognise two people for humanitarian overseas service. The Humanitarian Overseas Service Medal honours members of recognised Australian groups for emergency humanitarian service overseas in hazardous circumstances. The Humanitarian Overseas Service Medal is a way for Australians to recognise members of Australian groups who perform humanitarian work in perilous overseas settings. The Governor-General, on the recommendation of the Secretary of the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, may make the award to a person or persons who meet the eligibility criteria. The central symbol of the Humanitarian Overseas Service Medal is an Australian eucalyptus tree. The branches spread from the Australian land at the base of the medal to the world which is represented by a circle. A ring of gum tree nuts or gum nuts surrounds the circle symbolising hope and life after disaster. Like the Australian eucalyptus seeds which regenerate following bushfires, humanitarian service assists the recovery and continuation of life. The back of the medal repeats the ring of gum nuts and details the award and the recipient's name. The Humanitarian Overseas Medal draws its inspiration from Indigenous motifs. It was designed by Ballerinji of Sydney. Two recipients. The colours of this ribbon, before I get into that, are gold and eucalyptus green, and the gold symbolises the Australian sun, optimism and hope. The eucalyptus green continues the regeneration symbolism of the medal design. And so the recipients are receiving this award for their service during the Christchurch earthquake of March and uh, of 2011 through the later March 2011. The Christchurch earthquake was declared an eligible event under the Humanitarian Overseas Service Medal regulation. I'd like to call forward Senior Station Officer Douglas Albion Broom. Chief Officer.
Douglas Broom first joined CFA in November 1984 as a volunteer member of the Kutupna Rural Fire Brigade at the age of 17. He was an active volunteer member, also spent time as a brigade secretary. Kutupna is a small town in the CFA District 22. It lies between Echuca and Shepparton. His rural upbringing provided Douglas with a reputation amongst his colleagues as a bit of a country boy. Douglas commenced as a recruit firefighter at Fiskville in February 1988 and upon graduation he commenced his CFA career with the North Geelong Fire Brigade before moving to the Dandenong Brigade 12 months later. Douglas spent the next 16 years with the Dandenong Brigade working through the ranks. He also spent time at Eltham, Trialgan and Hallam. He's also acted in the role of operations officer in various locations including CFA headquarters as the specialist response officer. Douglas is currently a senior station officer at Frankston Fire Brigade. Douglas has a strong passion and great skill in the specialist rescue area and he is considered one of CFA's leaders in the area of rope rescue and urban search and rescue. In February 2011, Douglas flew to Christchurch, New Zealand as part of the Australian response team. His technical proficiency was critical to the earthquake response effort. Douglas is highly respected by his CFA colleagues and is well known for his unassuming personality and his passion for serving the community. Thank you, Douglas. <laughs> Chief Officer, I'd like to present Senior Station Officer Anthony Hayfield. Anthony Hayfield first joined CFA in May of 1998 as a volunteer member of the Melton Urban Fire Brigade. He was an active volunteer member of Melton. Growing up in Melton from the age of four, apparently Anthony was heavily involved in sporting activities including cricket and football. He's an, also an active reserve member for the Australian Army. After leaving secondary school, Anthony started work as an apprentice fitter and turner at a local cable manufacturer and Anthony was renowned as a good person and a good leader. And along with his engineering background, he was identified as being able to assist in the rescue effort in New Zealand. His actions and demeanor received respect and made Anthony go the go-to person for guidance. Anthony commenced as a recruit firefighter in Fisville in May 2001. Upon his graduation, he commenced his CFA career with Geelong City Fire Brigade. During his tenure at the Geelong City Fire Brigade, he attained the rank of station officer and senior station officer. He was also able to use his skills and become a lead assessor for specialist appliance and other roles. During his career, Anthony has worked through the ranks and now finds himself a senior station officer at Ocean Grove Fire Brigade. Anthony has always been a, has had a keen interest in rescue operations, including RAR and USAR, uh, Urban Search and Rescue and has also been an instructor in both of these disciplines and his skills and knowledge and attributes are well respected within the fire brigade. Anthony has recently been able to work in the promotional course arena and he is now an assessor for the station officer command and control segment of the assessment and an assessor on the leading firefighter policy and legislation. Anthony is well deserving of this prestigious award. Please put your hands together. All right, so at this point of the ceremony, the Chief Officer's Award, and that is awarded to the recruit who has demonstrated the highest level of practical skill and firemanship throughout the course. An account and cheque sponsored by the Fire Brigade Credit Co-op to the value of $250 will be going to this recipient. Can I ask Mr. Alan Roberts to present with the Chief Officer to come forward and present the, in, uh, the uh, award. At the moment, this will be the Instructor's Award, but if you would like to come forward, sir. Now, for the Chief Officer's Award, I will call forward Callan Hare. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together.
unseren Kerl. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to call forward, if I can, as CEO, Michael Wooten, who is going to award to uh, a recruit who has achieved the highest academic record over the course. The CEO's award for the recruit course one, 2015, is awarded to, drum roll please, Chris Watson. Thank you, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Chris. Thanks, Michael. And finally, the Instructor's Award. It's voted on by the instructional team and is awarded to the recruiter as best demonstrated the values of the squad. And the team values of the squad for this year are respect, teamwork, integrity, honesty and mateship. The trophy is sponsored by the Fire Brigade Credit Co-op. There's a trophy, there's an account and a cheque, and it's uh, to the value of $250. Now, I'd like to call forward, if I may, Mr. Alan Roberts again, who is going to present this award to, I won't have a drum roll this time, to Emmett Bronker. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to now, if I can, call the Chief Officer forward yet again. It's up and down, up and down today, Ewan. And uh, while this is occurring, I'd li certainly like to thank the uh, distinguished guests and all of you for being here today. I'd also like to thank those assisted in all aspects of today's ceremony. The, uh, the point at which we're at now, of course, is, is very important because we're going to be um, presenting our new recruit firefighters as firefighters. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to now present the new firefighters, number one of 2015. 